But it's pretty similar, you know. Um, and uh, it, uh, it works out well. I, uh, I do all my own, like, get all my own clients myself in marketing and stuff like that. So, yeah. All right, well, yeah, this is definitely, this is definitely a thrill in the issue. So, what do you guys want to start on? Yeah, it really pays off. It's like, it's like, it's like, so, sciatica, here's, it's one of the conditions that I laugh at. Uh, uh, very rarely do people have what I actually consider an actual case of sciatica. In fact, for all massage therapists, we've worked for a grand total of 200 plus years in here, probably. Um, how many of you have actually seen a clinical case of sciatica? <laughs> Yeah. What was going? Was it? Would the dad actually have a degeneration of sciatic nerve? You know, she she never the client that I, that most sticks out in her mind never actually went to a doctor. She just kind of ignored it, ignored it for a long time. Yeah. And um, I don't know if it was it was most likely the pericolitis. I, yeah. I think for her because it was it was very, very inflamed, very very tight. Um, I worked on her for about thirty minutes, and she said she hadn't walked like that in over like two years. Yeah. Um, so just, just a little bit of pressure for her. Yeah. And, uh, do wonders for her. Most people, I, I say, have a case of tight ass. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think that sciatica, and maybe I'm wrong, I, I thought that sciatic from a clinical standpoint was like they actually have a degeneration of the sciatic nerve. Mm -hmm. And if there's a, a major nerve problem, not not soft tissue pressing on the nerve, but like they've actually had, you know, a major. That's really bad diagnosis. Well, yeah, because the thing is, that's not soft tissue. Right. That's yeah. like they have other medical issues. Right. Most people, it seems like they have some tightness in their piriformis. Mm -hmm. Their piriformis seems to press on the sciatic nerve. They get pain runs down the back of their leg. Yeah. Uh, there was a guy who came into the, the chiropractor's office I used to work at. He was on crutches, and I talked with him. And he worked at Lowe's and was on his feet all day. It was like, it sounded like tight ass. Mm -hmm. And I worked on that affected side, just a little gentle mobilization, stretching, a little compression. He like walked out of the room and just picked up his crutches and went to the front. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just soft tissue. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said I laugh, because we, I see, we see it so often, <clears throat> but I don't think most people, again, I don't think they have a clinical case of sciatica. What they've got is like what some people would call piriformis syndrome. Yeah. The problem is when I make a video on YouTube, what do I call it? Piriformis syndrome? Sciatica. Yeah. Because they don't know piriformis. It's too, too many of the syllables. They don't know what it is. Right. Yeah. And that's too where, like, it's funny because I'll make a video on, you know, help, help with sciatica. And then a massage therapist will be like, no, dude, it's not sciatica. They just have piriformis syndrome. And I'm like, the video is for you. <laughs> the video is for the public that don't know nothing, and I'm looking for the keywords that they use. All right. They don't say, yeah, the adhesive capsulitis. They say, that's a broken shoulder. <laughs> so, so if it can be worked on and they have the successful results with you working on it, then it probably was not. A clinical case of sciatica. That's what I call it. Now, my language may be wrong, and I might actually have to go to Google and look up sciatica to find out how they're actually defining that. Yeah. But there are lots of conditions like carpal tunnel syndrome, TMJ dysfunction, uh, plantar fasciitis, thoracic outlet syndrome, you know, that I see again and again and again that have like such a strong soft tissue component that it's like, I mean, we don't diagnose or treat conditions. Mm -hmm. And I have to look at clients and go, well, what if your symptoms went away? And they go, well, that would be great. I'm like, cool, well, let's do some work, see what's, see what's going on. And then once I get into piriformis, they go, oh my God, oh my God. Huh. So we worked on piriformis a little bit yesterday because we were using our knee, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you have somebody with a, a, a triggery issue, like, ow, really tender, if you go with the elbow, how's it feel? Yeah. Well, it's, it could be too much, especially if you deliver too much pressure. It's not that the elbow is not a good tool, the forearm isn't a good tool, by the way. 
It's just now we've given you a bigger, broader tool. What would you use first? Me. I would use. You'd fist first? Just Knuckles? gently to see just where. To feel what's going on. And to see and where's the most sensitive. That's an important point. When I said what you would you use first, I think I have a tendency to like show you guys how to use your knees and feet to get you off your hands. Because mm -hmm. I don't want you to overwork your hands. Most therapists are like just beating themselves up. I have a tendency, you remember when I described Long Dong and the fact that he worked on the lady and he worked on her arm and he like felt her around and then he do some stuff? He works like I do. He would use his hands to like mobilize and say, hey, what's going on? And then he went, ooh, what's this? And then he used like a compression. That's exactly how it worked. Which is basically what you just described. Using hands to kind of feel, hey, what's going on here? And then go, ooh, okay. Now, if I then had a choice, like there's some t tightness in the gluteals, do I use my knee or my elbow? You guys already answered that. Usually I would go in with a knee just because it's a bigger, broader structure and it lets me save my hands. Once I've busted up concrete, then I can do it and do spot work. Mm -hmm. I've also, in my case, because I'm a male therapist working with clients, when it comes to intimacy, using my hands seems to be more intimate than using my knee. So it was like I sort of worked that into my sessions in a way that felt like it had the appropriate cultural context and the right business context. Make sense? Yeah. Um, so we did some sciatic work or you know, work on piriformis yesterday. I'm trying to think of like how else I'm going to address it today. Um, when you guys have people prone, do you ever have them like hike out a leg to the side? Yeah, all the time for like compression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Who 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 wants to have some gluteal work? Who what? Who wants some gluteal work? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Go for it. Oh. <laughs> so can you get on this table here? Is that okay? Yeah, go for it. Yesterday we were, we were coming in like this, right? Is that too much pressure? Mm -hmm. How's that? Okay. Okay, we'll give you some jostle. Yeah. Pretty good there? Mm -hmm. Can you put the pillowcase on the pillow there? takes a little time to learn how to feel with your knees and feet. Just give it time. Um, it'll become just second nature, just like your forearm and elbow. In her case, what I was going to show is this. If I take her comfortably, let's see if I can lift her up. There we go. Tuck that in. I'm going to roll her out. How's that? Comfortable. Comfortable? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I've got the, the IT band here. How's this? Okay. Not too much pressure? Just tender? Mm -hmm. There. Now, in my case, I'm going to slide my shoes off, or at least one. Uh, yeah, maybe that. And I'm going to come up and see. I'm going to put some pressure. What's that right there? That's a lot. Too much? Mm -hmm. Is this still too much? That's good. Okay. So, when massaging, we says you have to have one foot on the floor. They didn't say whether it was a single touch. 
So do they need the whole foot or just like a piece? Because depending on your table height, I might have to get on the table, which is why I was talking about taking off the other shoe, right? That was over here. Because essentially this is mat work. Is that too much for sale? Mm, that's good. And I don't know this table. I didn't feel unsafe getting up like this just because I'm distributing weight through her. Do you want down towards the tailbone? More up towards the head. Um, the tailbone. Mm -hmm. There we go. Right there. Mm -hmm. How's this in your back? Okay. Mm -hmm. In her case, just for some balance. How's that on your IT band right there? That's good. I did both is climb on really. Oh. Say it again. The glutes is a lot of pressure. To I, I too much of the glutes a lot of pressure. Oh, okay. Is it too much still? Mm -hmm. So if I give you a little more in your back, is that better? Mm -hmm. There we go. But you see how I had to figure out how to distribute weight? Because mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to give you too much. Thank you for telling me. I couldn't, I couldn't quite make out what you were saying. So. Now, more towards the center or more lateral? More mm -hmm. center. More towards the center. She wants more towards the center. Right there? Now, what if I what if I change my angle this way? How's that? That's good. That's better. Priscilla. Mm -hmm. Good. Better there. Yes. Now, I can't say that working from that position is necessarily better. It just gives you another option. The other option is this: if I had already been working with Priscilla. If we had done gluteal work or piriformis work from that main position with the legs down, then we did that deeper compression. I got on the table, leg out to the side. I might go in for this if she was comfortable enough for it. Okay. Move her up. Move this around. Now, how do you feel about doing this with clients? I usually wouldn't start with this one for obvious reasons. Um, when I've put this on recordings or, or photos, I've had people write me and go, yeah. um, I use this as like a promo photo for something. They're like, can you change the photo? We don't want people to get the wrong idea. But I don't think they really understand what I was doing. And in Western, ooh, how are you right there, Priscilla? Mm, that's tender there. <laughs> so, <laughs> before it was like big and broad. Like my knees have different touch receptors. You know, like some people prefer hands because they feel like they're more sensitive, they can feel more, right? And in a sense, that is true, but I'm just trying to give you a broader range of tools. You know, when I'm right along our sacrum and I go, ooh, right there, this is just contacting a much smaller piece of skin, like a much smaller piece of connective tissue, muscle, than the knee was. I kind of start off, like I said, busting up concrete through the general area, and then I come along with the pickaxe and do some cleanup. How's that? Right there, for so. Okay. So the additional option is this. Pressure's okay? Mm -hmm. I, I, can, I can hook here, and I've got some, some movement, so I can start to like move the hip around. Now, do I do this on clients who aren't draped? I mean, or so the clients are naked, no. essentially. No. Then obvious, right? I just bring it up, you know, because um, this is mat work. The, this this version, my legs are in a different position. I typically would do this on a mat. The people who are apprehensive about this, normally, if you if you do this with them one time, they go, uh, they go, this is real good. I like this. From the outsider's perspective, in like Western cultural context, people might get the wrong idea. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you prefer the jostle to just static compression? The jostle. The jostle is better? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give, give her a quick choice. Um, when they're face down, I have to ask for even more verbal feedback because I can't read her facial expressions. Mm. What's 
also right there. Now you've got the outside, like the peronials, you've got the IT bands over here if you want it. Mostly when we talk about piriformis, if you have tailbone and then like the top of the iliac crest, it's kind of in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of dead center in the toes. If I want more pressure, I can have my legs down and I can start to kind of lift. I'm not going to do much just because I wanted to demonstrate. Because if I lift my center of gravity, it means I can get my shoulder above my elbow so I can sink in just a bit more. After we do these compressions, uh, we're going to have the person turn over and then we'll show like some lengthening that you can do for the area as well. Normally, if I was doing a sciatic class, which eventually I may do, by the way, um, like as an actual CE class online, um, you go through some of how I would deal with that. But a lot of times, people are just having problems with piriformis and their gluteal muscles. I also find gluteus medius to be very challenging for other people. So I might use these in two different ways. This is essentially the same thing we were doing before, right? But now I'm the prop and I'm using my forearm and elbow. It just depends on the person you work with. Um, if you work with a 300 pound guy, then we can, then we can. More, more body weight, deeper compression, right? Just giving you more tools so you don't just like wear out your, your hands uh, working in the area. If you get someone for some reason, remember I used a towel yesterday? Mm -hmm. If you get someone where it's like, you get into here and it's like, oh, it's just, it's too sharp, then they'll say something like that. If you fold a towel over them, it dampens your elbow, right? You're using the same tool, but you've modified it so the pressure is not quite as sharp. Did you guys want to try those too? Yeah. And typically, again, it's, it's pure formus and the other gluteal muscles. The piriformis is the, the main culprit, typically. have any questions at all uh, just feel free to write in the chat box I'll uh, get to it as I can just working with the students on day two of table time they were asking about sciatica uh, piriformis syndrome problems in the gluteals we showed like a knee based technique and then one for the elbows and forearms glad to have you guys on board today And with the bolster, more so. What I'll find what happens if you don't have the bolster when you, their leg is out to the side, it's like there's no support for like the front of their hip. What I'll tend to do is with this, it's not bolstering here, it's really snugging this up high as possible. Yeah. 
if if you don't bolster them, it's like they can't quite let go because they're afraid that the they're a little hip is going to move a position that they're not familiar with. Oh yeah, I'm like, I'm too, feeling... Because oh, yeah. like, you don't feel as tight. There you go. Obviously. Standing on the edges is easy. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, that works. That's good. Good. Yeah. Super. <laughs> Make the chana vegan. Oh, sweet. And the rice. Oh, Thank that's you. Good. That's a little bit more intense. Yeah, that is. Mm -hmm. It's good, but yeah, it does. Love it. Okay. Is there still a lot of eight grades? No. Now, <laughs> now, 10 students. That spot is yeah, like 10 of them are doing so much so work on both sides for me. Um, so How does that pressure? The pressure is on the upward? Spots. No. So all of you at this stage have gotten on the table. I joked about math work. Okay. Yeah. One of the things that I think maybe when I started, I would go. Okay, Nick. Um, I'm gonna get on the table to like, you know, use a little more pressure. How, how, how many of you feel comfortable even with my voice right there? Okay. Uh -huh. Not so comfortable. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I need you guys more confidence. So I go, you know, and they had to kind of learn, like as as I went. I was like, Nick, listen, I, okay, I want to use yeah. like a deeper compression. I'm gonna hop up on the table and use my knee, okay? Uh -huh. You notice in that case, I didn't even really ask. Right. Like it's just normal. Yeah. Um, in, in my work now, I don't even verbally really ask. I'm like, but the thing is, they come to me, they know I do something weird, or something math, whatever. So my my parameters are a little different. What I don't want you to do is like, I don't know, it's like if you just do it sometimes within the appropriate cultural context, you don't necessarily need to ask or act like it's a weird technique or, you know, but you also just have to be mindful of your cultural context. You know, you could very quickly say, listen, do you mind if I get on the table and use a deeper compression? Because they don't, they're not, they don't, they don't, like, what I felt like was I was in, it was this weird thing where okay if I brought my car to a mechanic really getting and the mechanic wheels the car into the the slot and they use one of those automatic lifts and it lifts the car up above his head so he can just walk under the car and check it out and I'm like no 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 I don't like that please put the car down on the ground I want you to get on that little roller table and roll underneath. Would the mechanic work on my car? No. Uh huh. That's so why do they let massage therapists have the same issue, but yeah. the client dictates to us the tools that we use? Yep. I can't use your knees and your feet. No, no, no. I want a massage. Make sense? But we have to expand their their parameters. I just don't want you to go in and not not be confident. Uh, Ladies, that's why yeah. you guys have a <laughs> much easier time with all on both fronts. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, I'm so um, used to just I, I have to be a little bit more aware of cultural context as a guy, but it gives you additional tools, Nick, to be able to work on those things like deftly in a way that like builds their trust very rapidly. I'll, 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 I'll just like, 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 like,
They're like, no, they think I'm just going to compress there. Not you, buddy. And then this one, awesome. But you guys already know this, right? Yeah. In other words, I don't want anybody to go, why do you teach that? Those are actually like the wall.